Rule number four in my golden rules of mineral exploration is map the old alluvial workings. It's just a really good indicator that there is absolutely certain to be gold in this creek and as a result there's absolutely certain to be a source of gold up the head of that creek. I'm Nick Tate and this is another video in the series of Fieldcraft for Geologists. This is the headline version for YouTube. If you want the full video, go to the link in the description below and for the price of a couple of gold assays, you'll get the full version of this video, all the others in the Fieldcraft series and anything else new that I shoot as I find interesting things in the field. If you're looking for gold deposits or tin deposits, there's simply no better stream geochemistry than historical alluvial workings. But the ones that have been there for a while can be a little bit tricky to identify. So let's have a look at a few of the clues that get left by the old fellas who worked them and see if we can follow in their footsteps. The most obvious thing to look for is pits like these. And you'd be surprised how long those things last. These things have been here over a hundred years and it's still really clear that there's a pit here and a pile of mullock there. Some of the ones nearer to the creek get wiped out by floods, but the ones a bit higher up, like this one, tend to get really well preserved and they stay there unless someone bulldozes them or covers them up for some other reason. When you see lots of these, you know there was a lot of gold in that creek because the guys that dug these holes dug them by hand and that was really hard work. If they didn't get any gold, they stopped digging. How do you tell the difference between an alluvial pit and a hard rock pit? Well, obviously alluvial pits are usually in alluvium. That's the flat banks of sediment usually adjacent to a creek and generally in lowland areas. Hard rock dumps are usually composed of big blocks of broken rock and usually there's some pieces of whatever they were mining. In this case, a big chunky quartz vein. Hard rock pits also tend to be in lines. They tend to follow lines of load or veins or some other linear object, whereas alluvial pits tend to be scattered in broad groups. Alluvial pits tend to be in the flat areas, in alluvium. This one's right next to a creek just there. And the dumps tend to have a lot more fine material in them. Not so many pieces of broken rock and the pieces that you do find tend to have rounded edges on them because it's alluvium and this was once rolling down a creek somewhere. One of the more subtle things to look for are rock dumps on the edge of a creek like this one. When the historical miners were working a creek like this, they'd pick out all of the stones and throw them onto the side of the creek so that they could wash the fine material through a sluice race at the end of the creek. Sometimes they'd do that in the dry season, they'd pick out all the rocks and they'd stack the rocks on one side and they'd stack the earth on the other side and they'd wait for the first big shower of rain in the wet season and then they'd run out with a rake and a shovel and sluice all the fine material down through the creek while it was running. So quite often you'll find these rock dumps all along one side of the creek and nothing on the other side. On its own, that might just look like an accumulation of rocks on a levee bank or something, but when it's done by hand, you'll see them often in piles, and as I said, they'll often be along one side of a creek. Sometimes in a narrow gully like this one, the historical miners would cut a bunch of trees and lay the logs across the top of the gully, and they'd pick out all the rocks and throw them on the side, and they'd stack the fine material on top of the logs. Then they'd wait for the first big storm of the wet season and when the creek started to run they'd run out and pull the logs away one at a time so that the fine material fell into the water and ran through the sluice race at the end of the creek. You won't find those logs, they'll be rotted away long ago but again there'll be piles of rock along the edge of the creek and usually just on one side. One particularly good indicator of historical alluvial workings are these dry stone walls along the edge of a creek. When the old alluvial miners were working a creek like this, they'd pick out all the stones in the creek and throw them up onto the bank so that they could wash the fine-grained alluvium through a sluice box in the creek. Their aim was to get down to the bedrock at the base of the creek 
because most of the gold will be trapped in the cracks and crevices on that bedrock. If the alluvium was particularly deep and they had to throw out a lot of rocks, there was a good chance that it would slide back into the creek while they were working. So in that case, they would sometimes build these beautiful dry stone walls along the edge of the creek to stop the rocks coming back in. If you see that, you know that there was a lot of gold in the creek, the alluvium was particularly deep, and it was worth their while to dig down to that bedrock. Another thing you'll sometimes see are contour trenches like this one, coming along around the contour of a hill and angled slightly down slope to feed water into a creek. If there's alluvial workings in that creek, then this contour trench will tell you that there was a lot of gold in that creek because it was worth the effort to dig the contour trench to feed the sluices in the creek. Another clue you can often find to old alluvial workings is diversion channels, like this one. The main creek's over there, and this small diversion channel has been cut so that they can reroute the water around the area that they're working until they've cleaned it up and got it ready for the sluice, and then they'll put the sluice down the end of the main channel and put the water back in where they're working. One of the more subtle things you might find from time to time is dry blowing heaps. When the historical miners were working in an area that didn't have any water, they'd sometimes use a dry blower. It was kind of like a set of bellows with a sluice box fitted on top and a hessian bag in the bottom of the sluice. The air blew up through the sluice and jumped the dirt up and down as it went down the slope of the sluice and the heavy gold particles were left behind. What came out of the sluice at the end was all the pieces of gravel and sand and they often made dumps like this. So if you find a dump like this that has just sort of gravel sized particles in a rounded heap about a metre in diameter and maybe 10 or 20 centimetres high, then that's a pretty good clue that there was dry blowing going on. So whenever I find these, I always map them. A GPS point for every pit and the overall distribution of those pits is a really good guide to where there's a significant source of gold further up the creek. When you get a lot of those in a lot of creeks pointing to the same hill, then you're onto something.